what you get is really up to you. If you come expecting, God will fill you up. The Bible says the hungry shall be filled. Amen. Didn't say the one who attends the best church with the best preacher. It says if you hungry, God will fill you up. It don't matter how 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 unanointed I am. Got quiet in here. Amen. I'm just joking right there because we're gonna bring the word, and the word is already full of power and anointed. Everybody went. It's gonna be unanointed today. No, it's gonna be the word. It's gonna have power. But if you don't come expecting to receive, and the Bible says that you have to be good ground, ready to hear it, receive it, and bear fruit with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Galatians. That we're going to talk about living in love. Oh, don't, you usually don't get any shouts right there, man. That just, oh, we want to talk about prosperity in a four-car garage and a three-story house. But anybody interested in living in love? We want to talk about miraculous. It would be a miracle if people started living in love. Living in love. And it's a catch, it's a, it's, a, it's a play on words here, you'll see in a second. But you have to live in God's love. Amen. If you don't have a revelation of how much God loves you, and if you don't have a revelation of the love of God, you will think that the Bible says that faith worketh by love means faith works by you being a good person. And I promise you can't earn your healing, you can't earn your salvation, you cannot earn your blessing. We're going to see in just a second. Bible, how many of y'all know the scripture says faith works by love? And I heard a long time preachers get up and start preaching. They said, well, y'all hold on to your seats today. We're going to talk about love. And I'm going to stomp all over your feet, but just take your medicine. It's good for you. You know, love is not a condemning message. God is love. Aren't you glad that he is not looking at you ready to slap you down, but he loves you. And if you get a revelation of how much God loves you, your faith will work a whole lot better. Faith is not about you being patient, kind. See, it just don't make sense because here the Bible says, by faith we simply receive the promise. Amen. Now, if faith is a work, then I can work for the promise. See, you, I've heard it said too many times, and I just don't agree with it, that if I hadn't got my healing, I need to check on up, check up on if I've been good enough, if I've been kind, if I've been patient, if I've been long suffering, all of those things. That you're telling me that I can be kind enough to somebody, do enough random acts of kindness to, be, to receive healing for cancer. No, 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 the Bible don't teach that. The Bible says he has already paid for healing. You can't do anything to add to that payment to get anything from God. You must just simply receive it. But we hear in even faith churches a lot of time, it gets confusing to me because I've heard for a long time, if your faith isn't working, just check up on your love walk. Well, what are you talking about? Are you saying then that my faith will work a lot better if I will just be a better person? then what you're saying is that I can be good enough to receive anything from God. And how many of y'all know you are not good enough and you're not going to be good enough to receive anything from God? And it's not based upon your good works. It's based upon Him being good enough to give it already. It's paid for, brother. It's already been done. But we're going to clear up this love thing today. We're going to live in His love. Because if you live from the place of His love, receiving becomes easy. Amen. Look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Galatians 5, 22. I got the revelation of this, and I think that's when everything just about started taking off. Just took off in my life. Amen. I don't know how you're doing, but I'm doing real good. <laughs> Amen. How many of y'all glad you're doing good? Amen. How many of y'all glad that you got every promise? Danielle said it in the offering. Every promise is yes, and every promise is what? Amen. So how are you doing? Well, I didn't ask how it looked. I said, how are you really doing? You are doing how he said you were. I have a new testimony now. I'm not going to tell you how my story, I drank a case every day, lost 70,000 on riverboats, but I'm getting better every day. No, you know what? It is good for me. Amen. Now, I remind you all the time what God brought me out of, but that is not my testimony. That is my story. Everybody got a story, but the Bible says right now they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word that is their 
testimony now. What's your testimony? Well, I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm strong in the Lord, the power of his might. I'm not going to tell you about what I used to be because he died. Who I am now is blessed. Some of y'all get happy about it if you really believed it. Too. Let me go. I'm not, I'm not preaching today. I'm going to teach. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, verse 22. It says, but the what? Say fruit. Say fruit. Underline fruit. Circle fruit. Highlight fruit. Faith is not a work. I mean, love. Yeah, faith either. Love is not a work. Love is a fruit. For the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. Go to the NIV. That's what I got it memorized in years ago. <laughs> it's going, they're going to lie. They don't say that. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and self good gentleness and self-control against such things there is no what law go back up to 25 again 25 says but the fruit of the spirit is love amen 22 i mean in our own efforts we can never produce any fruit for God. Why? Because it says right here that it is a what? Fruit. It is not a work. Fruit of the what? Spirit, not a work of the flesh. So in and of yourself, you can never be a person that tries to be good enough to make joy show up. It is a fruit that comes out of the what? Spirit. You understand this? Because you got to get this. You're always trying to be making it show up. But how many of y'all know a tree that bears fruit is not putting forth much effort at all? How many of y'all ever rode by a tree and it looked, it looked like an orange tree? We went down and preached at Pastor Kenneth's church in Orlando, went by a bunch of orange trees sitting out there, and I didn't look at those with those oranges hanging off saying, boy, they working hard. They look like they're struggling. They're just shaking and pushing them. They're putting out a whole bunch. They're trying to get fruit to come out. But most believers are trying to make fruit happen when fruit should really just be effortless. What? How is that effortless? It is a, we're bearing fruit because we are hooked up to the, amen. The Bible says we are the, he's the vine, we are the branches. How many of y'all looked and see, see, what if I was trying to get you to not bear fruit, all I would have to do to a tree is cut off its branch. Amen? Amen. So I want you to look down here at verse 25. That's why I said 25 a second ago. Go to verse 25 if you could, Tom. Verse 25 says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the what? Spirit. I mean, I know we live our life by the Spirit. Or you could say life flows from the what? Spirit man. No works of your flesh are going to produce life. You're not going to be a good enough person to produce life. Life flows from the what? Spirit. We live by the Spirit. So let us keep in step with the what? Spirit. This means right here that if I'm living out of the Spirit or Love is going to flow from me. Joy is going to flow from me. Peace is going to flow from me. If any of God is going to flow from me, it has to flow from the spirit man, not the flesh. You can't, be, you can't go to church enough times to get happy. That's what I wanted to see. I've seen people. They come to church, come to church, come to church. Never do seem to find that joy thing. Because church don't make you happy. Fruit don't get born just by coming for one hour a week and then disconnect from the vine. Oh, wait a minute. This is good right here. It's more teaching today than preaching. If you came to run and shout today, you might not do it. Because here's the deal. If you come for an hour and a half on Sunday morning and you come in here, where are the fruit at in my life? Well, you disconnected when you walked out the door. And you started trying to live from the flesh instead of living out of the spirit, man. But if you'll just stay connected, fruit is automatic. Amen. Go to John 15. You, amen. See, mess, messages preached 
that keep people frustrated are those that encourage people to produce 1 Corinthians 13. If you want to get real condemnation message, if you want to go to a place that really is going to make you feel condemned, go to a place that says, are you, you know what, you, you need to be more kind. You need to be more patient. You need to be, no, see what, here's the deal, that what fruit not being born in our lives is not a weakness of the flesh. I'm going to say some things that are pretty backwards to probably what everything you've heard. It's not a weakness of the flesh that you don't bear fruit because you don't bear it in the flesh anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait a minute. No, it has more to do with my connection with God than it does a weakness. My flesh is weak. My, well, that's fine because you know what? Your flesh ought to be more weaker and weaker and your spirit man stronger and stronger. That's our ultimate goal anyway, amen? You don't bear fruit. You do not do 1 Corinthians 13. Love is patient, love is kind, does not envy, does not boast, keeps no record of wrongs. And you know what? I've heard it so much for the last 15 years that here's where we run to every time. Have you been doing enough good things? Saying this, that now, and, and I hear that, and it is, I mean, how many of y'all got frustrated with some preaching about, are you being good enough, are you being good enough? And I've heard it for so many years that I'm like, all right now, there's something not right. You're telling me that out of me, if I'm not producing in my flesh kindness, goodness, meekness, gentleness, self-control, if I'm not producing all of these things on the outside, then there must be something that I need to change and an action I need to take. You do not produce 1 Corinthians 13 or Galatians 2, verse 22, in your flesh. This is for believers who've been around a little while today. Amen? You want to see more fruit? Anybody want fruit? Amen. Go to John chapter 15. That tree is just sitting there bearing fruit, and it ain't struggling a bit. I see believers, though, they struggling. They having a hard time. They in and out. They, they up and down. They don't know what. I, 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 they, you just see a lot of things that really don't even look like what the Bible talks about. Watch this. There is one easy way to keep a tree from bearing fruit. One very easy way to keep a tree from producing fruit. I thank God we saw over 10,000 people born again in northwest Louisiana. But you know what? Fruit is just a now about to start getting good for us. Can anybody say amen? I said, we're just now about to see some good stuff take place. Amen? We've seen a whole lot of fruit, but it's about to get better and better and better and better for us. Amen? Why? Because I am just living in his love. And you know one way that I know that the enemy will try to keep me from producing anything good and any fruit and bearing any fruit and being fruitful is simply to cut me off from the Father. See, it's not about the branch, it's about the vine. <laughs> Write it down. It's not about the branch, never has been. The branch by itself can't do a thing. Oh, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. Some of y'all looking like, what are you talking about? I forgot to read it. Watch this. I'm just ahead of myself right here. John chapter 15, verse 4. John 15, verse 4 in the NIV, I guess, is what I got here. NIV says this, Remain in me, and I will remain, what? In you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. Can you do anything good without remaining and staying connected to Father God? No, you can't. Can you in your flesh produce love? Can you in your flesh produce patience? Can you in your flesh produce joy? Can you in your flesh produce faithfulness? But wait a minute. If I remain in Him and He remains in me, I will Produce. Watch what it says. Neither can you bear fruit unless you what? Remain where? In me. Boy, if I was the devil, my main thing would be to try to cut you off from God. Because it says right here, keep reading. I am the vine, you are the branches. Boy, this is revelation right here. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do what? Absolutely nothing. Wait a minute. Now, I 
can't get any joy out of my life apart from him now it's counterfeit and fake it'll be gone tomorrow amen i can't get any patience now your bible says every fruit that we will bear how many of y'all want to bear much fruit amen fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness gentleness and self-control how many of y'all want to produce a lot of that you won't do it in your flesh and apart from him you can't do anything so what does it say that if you remain in me go back up to the next scripture i am the vine you're the branch you remain in me and i will remain in you no branch can do this by itself have you ever seen a tree laying on the side of the road and you see it there and i mean if you want to get something looking dead real fast get it cut off from god this happens in the church it happens all the time the number one thing god is trying the enemy the devil is trying to do is get people disconnected from life himself why because you won't produce any fruit you won't have any real joy you might have to go get joy on friday night but saturday night but sunday morning you feel like a big pile how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Counterfeit joy, counterfeit peace, counterfeit love. It don't last. And they wonder why it don't last. It is not going to last if you're disconnected from the vine. You can just forget it. Your Sunday morning church don't produce this. Say amen. Because you got to re say remain. See, this is the answer for all of your needs right here. How many of y'all want to produce much fruit? can't do it by yourself you can forget see that's why when i hear people say check up on if you've been good enough check up no it's check up on your relationship it's always been about a relate god did not come so that we could be good he came because he is good and if we will stay connected to good we're gonna bear much good <laughs> wait this has set you free Amen. And it will give you revelation. If you see the enemy is trying to get you disconnected and cut you off, he's doing it for a reason. He wants to see death in your life. He don't want to see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. He wants you disconnected from God, disconnected from the people of God, disconnected from the church, disconnected from everything that has to do with God. How many of y'all seen some people get disconnected? My goodness, and they look like death. I done seen good-looking women. My wife's sitting right here, but there's people that look good other than her. She said they ain't supposed to be, but there he is. But I've seen them get out of church and get disconnected from God. And you see them five years later. Look like somebody took the ugly stick and just slapped them around. Say, hey, oh, you done seen it. Because they can look good early on, but I promise you this, the world will get the very best of you. Oh, it'll get you looking ugly fast. I say, amen. Why? What happened to her? She don't walk. She's not this. She's not connect. Or he. You ever seen he? Man, I look younger than all the folks in my class. I had somebody ask me the other day, how old are you, 33, 34? I said, praise God. <laughs> what happened? I'm connected to life. <laughs> amen. And I'm about to get to looking better. <laughs> amen. I'm going to go. Well, I'm about to hit it, boy. We, you, you, we bringing this stuff in? Hey. Oh, yeah. Why? Because you know what? I'm going to get this stuff straight. It's going to be gone. All this stuff right here. Shake it. It's going to be gone. Why? But it, here's the deal. I'm hooked up to life himself. See, it's not, I'm not going to produce fruit because now I got saved so I can go be good. How many of y'all glad you didn't get saved so you can go be a good person? That message is tired in the church. Boy, it's so tired. People are tired. They're like preachers standing up saying, you need to be better. You need to do better. You need to be a better person. He's good. I bear fruit because my relationship is strong, not because I'm producing love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. I'm doing it because daddy's good and me and daddy tight. Now, if I get disconnected, I got no problem. Matter of fact, it says no branch can do any of this by itself. If you're missing out on love, you're missing out on real joy. Because you can fake everybody out at church big time. How you doing? Oh, oh praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Go home disconnected. Never look at God. Never talk to God. Never read the Bible. Never do anything godly. Your joy is not going to be there. God came to start a relationship, to restore a relationship that Adam and Eve lost. It's never been about you getting saved, so now you can be good. It's about you being saved because Jesus just restored your relationship to the Father. And watch what it says. It says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you'll bear much fruit, but apart from me, 
it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5, the first message I ever preached to three kids at a baseball field. I said, Lord, what you want me to tell these kids? I got saved. I was drinking a case every day, lost 7,000 on river boats, and I said, I'm going to preach to somebody. We put signs up all over the baseball stadium and said, we're going to have free, uh, free food, free this, free that, home run derby. We're going to be out here having fun. Come on. And I said, Lord, I, but I'm going to preach. I thought we thought about 300 kids was coming. Three came. <laughs> Wasn't real fruitful, but it was. First time I ever preached in my life, ever. And he said, go to John 15, 5. All right. He said, I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in he, me and I in you, you'll bear what? Much fruit. But apart from me, I can do nothing or no thing. And that was my message. You want to get hooked up? You, you want to you find life? You get hooked up. But apart from Jesus, just don't ever forget, you can't do nothing. Pretty simple message. But I believe there's one that it caught on. Amen. We had one show up, boy, 12 years old. He wasn't even supposed to come because it was a 13- and 14-year-old Bible study. One of them, 12 years old, showed up, got the message, got on fire for God his whole high school life. His brother was a crack dealer. His mom and dad was in jail. And for then on, he would call me once a week. Name was D. I said, what's up, D? He said, I'm just reading the Word, reading the Word, reading the Word, excited about Jesus, staying hooked up. Not a crack dealer, not a drug dealer, and now he was what? Well, last time we heard him, he was managing the stage of the Bell's restaurant, uh, stores is what he was doing. How could that happen? He got the hook up. How many of y'all glad you got the hook up? Yeah. Amen. I got the hook up. I didn't get church. I got hooked up with the creator of everything. And our relationship is good. And I'm not stay I'm not getting disconnected, but now I am producing and we can produce what? Much say much fruit. You can't walk in love in your flesh. Quit letting the devil slap you around because you're not being good enough. You never gonna be good enough. God is good enough. And what the enemy will do, faith works by knowing how much God loves you. Amen. Watch what this says right here. If the connection, it's the connection. Say it's the connection. Say I have the connection. I am hooked up. I got the hookup. Amen. I didn't get religion. I didn't get church. I got the hookup. Sit back and watch me bear fruit effortless, effortlessly. Amen. See, if you're putting forth too much effort, you might want to check up on your relationship. Jesus said, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden. My, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Is your life light and easy? I, I like it when people come up to you and they ask you. They say, how you doing? I say, light and easy, big daddy. What's up? It's easy on me. Light on me. How many of y'all know that would be a better testimony? Then how you doing? It's rough on a brother. I can't call it dog. I don't know. It's rough on me. Are you in the world? Are you in the church? Well, I'm in the church, but you know what? How many of people you talk to like that a lot of times? How you doing? Well, I'm okay. It's been hard. I'm tired. I'm getting tired. That's in Louisiana. They're tired. You, how many of y'all know you hooked up to a Father God filled with energy, never sleeps, never slumbers? How are you going to be tired? I preached four hours yesterday, five today, preached three more tomorrow night. We'll come up here. Why? Because we hooked up to strength himself. I'm getting tired. Well, you know what? Hook up. See, what we're talking about today is relationship. Because I refuse to come up here and start another religious group of folks. You remain in him and he remains in you, you're going to bear fruit. You get disconnected, you're going to struggle, and you're going to have hell on earth. There's your promise right there. Amen? And that's not condemnation, but here's the thing. If you disconnect, amen, we had a room full of folks yesterday just staying connected, ready, dream teaming. Say, I'm going to stay hooked up and connected and run with this. Amen? What are you running with? I'm running with a connection. I'm running with a vision God gave Amen? Oh, man. Gets me excited. What this means right here in this scripture, too, is no root, no fruit. I wrote that down on my tablet here. No root, no fruit. You can write it down. It won't hurt. It won't, you probably won't remember it if you don't write it down. A lot of times people are just looking at you like, you know, are you going to quit here? I don't know. We'll quit sometime. But I tell you this, if you don't have any root, you won't have any fruit. 
Amen. Write it down. No root, no fruit. You can't disconnect the root from the ground. You can't disconnect from the vine and think you're going to produce anything. Oh, you, but here's the easy thing about it. I wake up every day. How you doing, Jesus? How you doing, Roddy? Let's get up. Let's fellowship. He's not religious. He was a carpenter. He was not a Sadducee, a Pharisee, and walking around. They didn't like him. Religious folk did not like Jesus. Why? Because he wasn't religious. He was real, and he had a relationship with the what? Father and his disciples saw his relationship, and they said, Jesus, teach us to pray. Look like this praying stuff has got you the hookup. You're walking on water, man. You're raising up dead people. How you doing this? It's not because he was religious and went to enough church services. He had to say, I had to hook up. See, you don't have any power in your life either if you're not hooked up. So you're trying to work up some power when the power's already in you. Man, this is some, golly, write all this down. Get you seated. Praise the Lord. No root, no fruit. Psalm chapter 1, verse 2. Psalm 1, 2. We got a, I can't see that clock. I don't know where it went. Oh, you put me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get you. Get you bleeping. I'll hurry. I see a glare on it. I still can't see it. Well, praise the Lord. The enemy has one goal. His one goal is to get you disconnected. He does that a lot of different ways, but he has one goal get you sidetracked, get you distracted, get you offended, get you thinking something other than what's true. He got one go. It's really to deceive you from, from staying connected with God. He'll tell you it's better on, the grass is greener on the other side, there's better stuff going on over there in the world, and you go try it for a little while, come back, he looks beat down. I done been, how many of y'all been there? And you have been there. He used to go in the church, out of the church, in the church, out of the church, in the church, out of the church. Said it was the most miserable thing you could ever do. Running with God for a little while, run with the devil for a little while. Run with God for a little while, run with the devil for a little while. Run with God for a little while, run with the devil for a little while. That's really not connected at all. Amen? But once you just hook up, all of a sudden, things just are good and you can't explain why. Because I'm not doing, I'm not making this happen, it's just happening. Psalm 1, verse 2, says his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates what? Day and night. He's like a tree planted. Say planted. He's like a what? Tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither, wrinkle, die, or fade away. Oh, amen. What's your answer for wrinkles? Stay hooked up. Oh, yeah, go get you all the cream you want to get. But if you'll stay hooked up with God, he'll keep you looking young a long time. Amen. Watch what it says. It does not wither. Why? I got to hook up. I'm planted in Jesus. Matter of fact, I'm so planted, you can't move me. You get mad at me, you can't move me. You come against me, I'm planted, Big Daddy. I ain't going nowhere. I didn't get religion in church. I'm planted in living water. Amen. And those of you who are planted in it right now, you happy about it? Because you got the same life flowing through you. Where does the life come from? It comes from what's flowing through the vine, flows through the branch. I got the same thing Jesus had, the same life he had. He says, my life, I don't just give to you. My life, I don't just give for you. My life, I give to you. How many of y'all glad he gave his very life to us? You didn't just, he didn't give it for you and lay it down for you. He gave his very life to you. He who believes in me will have everlasting, eternal, God, Zoe kind of living. How do you get it? Now I got it, and now I plant. Planted like a what? He, he is like a potted plant. He is like a potted plant on the deck behind the house. Once you get tired of it right here, you can jump on over here. Once you don't like this pastor, you can go over here and find another one. Once you get tired of this church, you can jump over here and find another place. Got kind of quiet right here. Wait a minute. No, you're not a potted plant. You're planted like a what? Tree buried deep in the living water. And if I'm going to produce fruit, all 
I got to do is stay what? Planted. Unmovable, unshakable. Don't care what they got going over there. I got it going already. Don't care what they're doing out there in the world. I done been there, done that, got seeing T-shirts, and then come back to press. Say amen. See, here's the answer for your whole life. I'm giving it to you right now. Root yourself, plant yourself, stay there long enough to start seeing some fruit because as soon as you get planted, all of a sudden the life starts flowing. How do you produce fruit? I stay planted. I don't make it happen either. I just get, get where the rivers are living water flowing, and I stay planted right there, and all of a sudden things start changing. Now love starts coming. Peace starts coming. Where'd you get that peace? I don't know. It's just coming. I just so peaceful I ain't worried in years. Man, at all, I should be worried, but I'm not. I should have a nervous breakdown. I just hadn't. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. You going to take on that new building? No. Yeah, and more than that. Oh, yeah, we'll build another one. I plan on already got it drawn up. We we, we ain't even been in here three two months. Stay in here. What you? Why are you doing that? I'm planting. Life stuff keeps. Get, revelation keeps coming. Life keeps coming. Joy keeps coming. Peace keeps coming. God keeps coming. But boy, if I, I'm telling you, the enemy's number one trick: cut you off, distract you with everything in the world going on. Why? Because you won't produce any fruit if you're not connected. I didn't say if you don't come to church. We ain't worried about you. I'd rather you not come to church and stay in the Word all day at your house. Now, you're supposed to be here because the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together with what? Believers. But here's the message the Lord gave me yesterday after our four-hour Bible lesson was this. Fruit. We're seeing fruit. But we're not preaching the message where you got to go make it happen. We're just talking about the relationship that will make it happen. Everybody say this. I have the hookup. I bear much fruit. I'm planted, if you can't tell. Not moving. Not shaking. Devil, you're not going to make me change what I believe about my God. My God is good, and he does good things for me. Here's what I'm See, when you're planted and your, your beliefs are rooted real deep, a tree gets, see, that's why the enemy comes immediately to steal the seed some. The Bible says the enemy comes, go there real fast. All right, very praise the Lord. Mark 4. I wasn't going to this, and I don't have it on my tablet, so I'm, go to Mark 4, 13. On the screen, I think it is, unless it's moved, but I think it's in the same place. Mark 4. Let's go home. Got to go. Mark 4, 13. Jesus said unto them, don't you understand this parable? If you don't understand this parable, how are you going to understand anything? I'd have loved to have been in Jesus' teeth. He was for real. He says, y'all, if you don't get this, you ain't going to get nothing. So I'd like to pay attention. Keep reading. Keep reading. The farmer or the sower sows the what? Word. Watch this. Keep reading. Keep going, son. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear the word, Satan comes and takes the word away that was sown. What? In them. As soon as. Go to the, go, the King James, Tom, right there on that scripture. It says right here, King James, and it's, these are the sown on the side of the road where the word is sown, and when they have heard it, Satan comes when? Immediately. How many of y'all have ever come to a good church service, felt real good about it, got in the car, and all of a sudden, immediately the devil comes in and tries to steal what you've, been, what you've heard? Happens all the time. Why? Because it's a lot easier to steal a seed than it is to move a tree. What's he wanting to do? He don't want you to get rooted and grounded and unmovable and unshakable. He'll take the seed, but he can't. But, I mean, y'all know if a seed's laying on the ground, he'll come snatch it up, but he can't go push over a full-grown oak tree. I mean, y'all know we ought to be like an oak tree planted, and you know what? I ain't moving. I ain't. I'm hard. You hard? Yeah, I'm hard-headed. And devil, you're not going to move me. I done been there, done that, tried all of it, and you're still deceiving me. Watch this. Keep reading. Comes immediately to steal the word sown, and these are they which are sown on the ground. When they heard the word, immediately they got happy. <laughs> these people are at, at every church service. 
They come through the door all the time. Now, I'm just shaking a hand. I talked about it yesterday. Pastor, that was so good. Praise. This is what I've been waiting on. The church is awesome. I'm so excited. Don't ever see them again. Don't tell me that, Levin. Those people right there, they get happy real quick. But they don't have it. Watch. Oh, wait. I'll keep reading. I think this. I don't have this in my notes. Oh, but they have no what? They have no root in themselves. So they endure for a little while. A few weeks, months, maybe. Maybe even a couple years. But they don't have any real root. Watch this. For a time afterward, when affliction, afflict, say affliction. Nobody told you it was going to be easy. They just, all we've been telling you is going to be good. Oh, I thought it was going to be easy walking with God. No, there's going to be affliction. Persecution arises for the what? Word. What's the word? Trying you. Oh, my. Danielle done talked about it. I didn't even know she was going. What's going to happen? The word's sake. The word's sake. What? You say you believe? Let's see if you really believe. Oh, yeah, and it's not because of the devil. It's not because of anything else. It's just because you hear. And you say, I'm a believer. Oh, really? Let's see how much you believe, Big Daddy. What's going to come? Persecution, hardships, trials are going to show up because you say, by his stripes, I am healed. The doctor says you're sick. By his stripes, I am healed. The word said I am healed. I don't care what the doctor said. I believe the report of the law. What is this? This is somebody that stays planted. Don't look at anything else. And you know what? That right there is a, is a, is a hard thing to go. See, if, if living by faith was easy, everybody would do it. That's why a lot of people just go to church. They don't really live by faith. Keep reading right here. Affliction and persecution arise for the word's sake. Immediately they are what? There you go. Had nothing to do with who got them offended. They were offended because they had no root. Don't get me all the, everybody, hey, they offended, they mad at you. They don't have any root. Say amen. Because when you get rooted, you got love. Check this out. It's fitting together like a little old pub. When I'm rooted, I got love, and love takes no account of the evil done to it. Man, this is so good. This is even better than I thought. So what do I have to do? I have to keep my relationship with God strong. Not nod all my eyes and cross all my T's about my church stuff. Not see if I've done all my confessions in the morning and blab it, say it, say it enough, say it enough, say it enough. No, hang out with God, fellowship with the Father, and you will bear what? Much fruit. What flows through Him will start flowing through you. But watch what it says right here. For affliction and persecution of words sake, immediately offended. Go on, keep going. And these are they which are sown among thorns, which hear the word, and the cares of this world the deceitfulness of the dollar. And the lust of what? Other things. Not sex, but just other stuff. Just everything else except God. Comes in. Choke the word they heard. Wow. And it becomes what? Un. And these are they which are sown on good ground. Say good ground. Good ground. They hear the word. They what? Receive the word. And they what? Bring forth fruit. What did they do? They kept hearing the word, receiving the word, and bearing what? Much fruit. I'm just hearing it. I'm just receiving it. I'm just producing much fruit. I'm just hearing it. I'm just receiving it. And I'm producing what? Much fruit. I just keep hearing. I just keep receiving. I just keep bearing much fruit. I just keep on hearing, receiving. Got a CD going. The TV preacher's on. Come to the church. I come full. I don't come empty. You don't have to get me happy, preacher. I came happy. Hey, man, you don't have to stir me up. I am stirred, man. Yeah, most people come in here to get motivated. What is wrong with the church? They're not rooted. No amen for grunt. Come, you don't come to church. You, you're not rooted. There ain't no fruit. No root, no what? Fruit. But once you just stay connected, boy, how many of y'all know, how many of y'all been around some people that's just giving off love? You know, and the fruit on the tree, I'll say this, is not for the tree. No tree eats its own fruit. Your fruit in your life, your love, your joy, your peace, your patience, your kindness, your goodness, your gentleness, and your self-control, it ain't for you. It's for the world around you. 
when they come by your tree, they pull off a little joy. When they walk by your tree, they get a little bit of peace. Now, why is it when you show up to work, everything got good? Well, I'm bearing much fruit, and when I show up, I brought some fruit with me. Everybody pick you some right now, and let's get happy. What do we come in here to do? What does that mean? What flows from the Father flows through the branch. What flows through the Father flows through the Son. Jesus said, I do nothing unless the Father tell me. I only do what the Father says. What does that mean? It means I'm connected to Daddy God, Father God, love himself. God is what? Love. Now, love has to flow through the Son. But apart from me, you can't love anybody. You can be good and do some good things, but it's not real love. What's the name of this? Living in His love. See, when you get used to living in His love, boy, stuff just starts happening, and you really can't tell people why. How'd that happen? Man, just, it, God's good. How'd that happen? What'd you get out of God keep being good. He's keep, he keeps being good. Hey, how'd you get that blessed? Man, it's just God is good. Oh, you go to church. No, 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 I don't go to church. I got a new father. His name's Father God. I take him home with me, too. I mean, I know Jesus wants to come to your house. Zacchaeus climbed up in a tree. A wee little man, a wee little man was he. He looked over the crowd to see Jesus, and he said, Zach, come on down out of that tree. Why? He said, I'm today I'm coming to your house. <laughs> How many of y'all want to take Jesus home with you? Amen. See, forget your religion and your little dot and everything. You know, Matt, God's not even keeping attendance of your church. He wants to come home with you. But if you don't bring him home, that's not rooted. I didn't say root up in church. I said root yourself forever. See, the enemy, that's why he comes immediately to keep you from getting rooted. You don't take him home, will you? I can't promise no love, no joy, no peace, anything in your life. This is what the Lord told me to share tonight. I told you we'd run down, shall But it's, is it good? It's pretty good, isn't it? Because if I was a devil, I'd keep you away from God as much as I could. Because you're going to try to find love, and it won't work. You're going to try to get some peace, and it won't work. No matter if you how much money you ever make in your whole life, no peace comes with it. Deceitfulness of riches. Lust of other things. And then they just fall off because they see that didn't work either. What is it God's trying to do? He said, all I want is a hookup. I'm sending Jesus. Adam and Eve messed it up. I'm sending Jesus to restore the relationship they lost. God didn't come so you can go to church. He said, I come so you can get back hooked up with me. When? Every day. Not on Sunday, not on Wednesday. Amen? Now, you ought to come in here to be a blessing on Sunday and Wednesday. But you know what? He didn't come for Sunday and Wednesday. He come for every day, every night, every morning to fellowship and hang with you. That is how love works, and it's how your faith worketh. Faith worketh by God's love. Not by you being kind, patient, sweet, and loving. Don't it make more sense? Amen? Does it make more sense that your faith is going to produce now that you're hooked up to faith God himself? Amen. I'm telling you what, that maybe no, some of y'all had never heard it, but I heard it for years. I'm like, ah, I've got a check right here. Mm, uh, even good, my, some of my favorite preachers in the whole world. And I'm just like, ah, I don't know. It just don't make a lot of sense. Does it? You're telling me I've got to be patient and kind. I've got to be good. I've got to be a good person or my faith ain't going to work. No, I just learned that you receive by faith from God everything he's given because he's just good. Love is a fruit, it's not a work. I hope you wrote that down. It's not about you producing it and being a good enough person. See, I've been married to Danielle 15 years today. Today. Amen. Married to her 15 years today. And what this is, is a relationship. Do we have to work at it? Yeah, but we just stay connected. Amen. We just connect. I like connection. Amen. God is good. Amen. And love is not a work. Love is a relationship. We didn't start when we got married and said, now it's just I got to work. No, the Bible says you love them for, for better or for worse. Till death do you part. Say amen. 
How is that going to happen? I'm just going to stay hooked up. Amen? Now, when you start disconnecting, you get farther and farther away. When you start being ugly with each other, you get farther and farther away. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they do. Everybody does, because we've been there, too. We say, you know what we say? I don't want to get farther apart now. i got to get closer. You remember what Adam and Eve did when they sinned and they messed up? They got away from God. They ran from him. When God came to run to them, what do you do when your spouse, you and your spouse get in, in at odds? You don't run from them. The devil's trying to get you to separate from them. Say amen. Now everybody's thinking. Well, see, what's, what, what do you need to do more than anything? Go to them. Be a big boy. Say, you know what? I'm done. I'm pretty stupid. And I know you know that by now because we've been married a while. Just forgive me because I love you. Amen? And you make it back right, you repent, you get back straight. Same thing with God. The Bible says when we have sinned, he's faithful and just to forgive us and purify purify us of all unrighteousness. How many of you know when you start, when you get away from God, you don't run from him. You need to run to him. Why? Because the enemy wants to keep you disconnected. Anybody ever been away from God? Turned your back on him. Everybody raise your hand right now. Everybody. Are you a lying devil right now? Everybody got away. How many of y'all would say right now you just want to get closer? Just closer. Because if the relationship gets better and better and better and better, and the devil is a lie, he deceives. He wants to keep you away because he don't want you producing love in your life, fruit in your life, joy in your life. You can get joy on Friday night, but Sunday you're feeling bad about it. It's not real. Amen? Everybody bow your head real quick. Living in love. When I talk about walking in love, I'm talking about walking in God's love, not yours. <laughs> Man, it started making sense to me. I, I still got to study this a whole lot, a whole lot more years. But I'm starting to see it a whole lot better now. The whole Bible, the Bible says rightly divide the word can't tell me that faith is a work and everything's a work and I have to work out and work for everything that I get with God. Now, the Bible says this, that once you, it's, it's, it's all been about a relationship. All about a relationship. Is your relationship strong with God right now? Is it tight? Do you have the hookup? Some people in here, you know what I got the hookup September 19, 1995. I was 23 years old and never thought about God wasn't thinking about him at all, but he just loved me. You know what? Today, God's not looking at your faults and your failures, your sins, your drinking, your cussing, your running around, your wild living. None of that. He's looking at you through the eyes of Jesus. And God loves you more than you love yourself. Today. Not about you being good. It's about how good he is. Man, that's the gospel good news right there. If you're not sure you know Jesus, you don't have the hookup. You don't have the hook. You ain't never, you ain't never met Jesus. See, the first time I heard a preacher say this stuff, I said, that's me today, man. I need that right now. I'm tired of my fake stuff. I'm tired of being pushed over. I mean, y'all don't want to be a pushover no more. Right? See, if you're a tree, you can't be just pushed over. You're not going to be a pushover. I'm not, I'm not the devil's pushover no more. I'm not going to have be happy on one week and sad the next. Anybody in here right now, you want to make sure you know Jesus. You got the hook up. Anybody at all? I want to pray with you right there where you're sitting at. I'm going to pray with you right there. We're going to, amen. Hallelujah. Anybody? I want to pray with you right now. Jesus came to make your life exceedingly and abundantly better. Not a little better. He matter of fact, he came to make you brand new. Now, if there are anybody in here who may have disconnected, now we're going to be real. Is there anybody who may have disconnected? Yeah, you got church down pat. You can do church good. But have you been taking him home with you? Has he been going to the house with you? Have you been strong relationship-wise with him at home? You know you're saved. You know he's still your father, but the fellowship has been missing. Anybody at all want to pray with you where you're sitting? I see your hand. I see yours. I see lots of them now. Yeah, praise the Lord. Everybody knows this could be stronger. I could almost even have my hand up right here. Amen. I got a strong relationship with the Lord, but I want it to get closer got a strong one with Danielle, but I wanted to get close. Amen. Everybody pray this prayer with me. Say, Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name. Your word says, if I confess my sins, you're faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me from all 
unrighteous. Father God, I come to you right now. Thank you, Father, that I come and you welcome me back with open arms. Thank you, Father. From this moment forward, our relationship is rooted. Our relationship is grounded. No longer will I be an easy prey for the enemy, but I'm rooted and I'm grounded in God, in his love. And right now, I thank you, Father, that today everything just changed in my life. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Give everybody a hand clap right now. They, amen. Hallelujah. Like I said, some messages you ought to come and you ought to run around. Some messages you ought to dance. Some of them should make us think just a little bit. This is one I hope got you thinking. It's not about words. It's not about any of that. It's about a relationship with the Father. Amen. 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 See, some of us heard religion for so long, we think this is not, the, we, we think this is a lie right here. We got to be saved, then get good. Now he catches the fish, then he cleans them later. Amen. You can't clean yourself. How many ever caught a fish, started cleaning itself? No, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? I just, um, yep, there you go, throw me in a pan. <laughs> now God takes care of it a little at a time. How many of y'all still a work in progress? Well, you know why? Because God still loves you. He's not through with you. That's why you're a work in progress. None of you are perfect, never will be. But you, God's still working on us every day. Amen. We're working on our relationship. 15 years. Not where it's going to be. Amen. But it's not where it was. Amen. Love her. 15 years. Been loving. Amen. And I would ask her to marry me all over again. Right now. Amen. Amen. Hadn't been perfect, but it's been the hookup. I got the hookup. He who finds a wife finds a good thing. When she calls on my phone, it says, your, your good thing is called. T-H-A-N-G. Your good thing is called. Amen. And you know why? For 15 years, we have been walking through this thing, and we've only done it with God. He's been the center. Amen. Hallelujah. And since it is our anniversary today, what I wanted to do is a little, uh, presentation for her, tell her how much I love her, and I just, you can feel the lights, and I'm on, just look, one minute slideshow, so if you would, just be patient, and this is only because I'm the pastor, you can't do this, but I can, amen, praise the Lord. only a minute long and the sound wasn't there. Danielle likes classical music. Go ahead, Tim. Somebody play it now. Hurry. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs>
Danielle. She didn't know anything about this, so. Will you marry me again? Huh? Yeah? Okay. Because I'm saying it's going to be better. Hallelujah. Are we on? It's on for young and old. Hallelujah. Well, I count it a great honor to be here today. And um, because, you know, this marriage and this continuum of this marriage is in Christ. And that just makes all the difference. Amen. Amen. I've been married for 34 years. I just praise God for my life. And you know what? I just want to compliment this church. Since coming to this church, things are even getting better. <laughs> Amen. For my wife and I and for my family. Because my whole family is moving into a deeper walk with God since an attachment to this church and I'm just so excited about that as a father and a grandfather I just compliment the work of this couple and I count it a great honor just to um, minister to them today I want to welcome you all here today as we celebrate Pastor Roddy and Danielle the renewing of their vows and future commitment one to another I'm sure they appreciate the church family this morning friends and visitors and those that are joining together in this celebration Perhaps the only thing greater than one's first love is the recommitment of that love before God, family, and friends. You don't have to remember anything because you're going to have to repeat after me. Um, first of all, you, Pastor Roddy, okay? Have you got something? Do you have another mic there? I want people to hear what you're saying. And then we're going to need one for... Uh, Pastor Danielle, when she speaks too. Can you hang up? Okay. So if you, if you just, thanks, Danielle. And if you'd just like to repeat after me, okay? Amen. Danielle. Danielle. Once before, once before I, stood I stood with you before God, before God family, family, and friends. And, friends. and, now, once again, and now, once again, I take your hand, take your hand as, my wife as my wife and partner. And partner. I believe in this marriage more strongly than ever. ever. Danielle, Danielle, it's with great joy joy and trust trust that I commit myself myself once again again to be your husband. husband. I, Roddy, Roddy, give to you, you, Danielle, Danielle, a new promise promise and a new affirmation affirmation that the heart that has loved you you in the past past will always love you as long as we Today, after 15 years of marriage, I ask you to continue to take me as your husband. You have stood by my side through joy and grief, sickness and health. And for this, I'm so grateful. I thank God for you, my gift in life. Daniel, Daniel. Daniel, amen. Oh, Danielle. You, Danielle. you are the best part of me. You're the best part of me. <laughs> With you by my side. With you by my side. I have grown so much. I've grown so much. We have endured together. We've endured together. Laughed, and laughed and cried together. We are raising our beautiful We're family together. Raising our beautiful family. Danielle, Danielle, please take my hand once take again. My hand once again. With you as my partner, you as my, partner. my friend, my friend. and my help me. Best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. <laughs> yet to come. Yet to come. Amen. All ahead. Okay, now you, Pastor Daniel, if you'd like to repeat after me, other people here, like to speak up. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Have to get a bit closer. There we go. <laughs> Daniel, make it, you just have to repeat after me. Roddy, you are my heart and my best friend. Today, before family and friends, I renew my commitment to you. I promise to love and cherish you and cherish you. That's my Australian. Respect you and grow with you all the days of our lives. This is my solemn vow. Today, we celebrate the rebirth, the rebirth of our commitment before God, family, and friends, I 
proudly renew my marriage vow to you with all confidence in our future love I take you Roddy once again as my husband Roddy the best thing I ever did was to marry you well I'm getting too right now right all right no. my, my vow to you my vow to you before God is to be the best wife I can be for you and our family this is my promise for the rest of my life Roddy you are the love of my life I take you once again I take you once again as my husband amen if you just like to hold each other's hands and maybe just uh, touch each other's wings just to remember to the no no don't take that. You just hold hold each other's rings in his hand. That's cool. Okay. <laughs> Rod and Daniel, your original wedding rings are outward symbols of your commitment to each other. The never ending circle of your rings symbolizes your never ending love for each other. As you both hold each other's hands and touch each other's ring, repeat this together after me. From this day forward, I reaffirm my love for you. This ring is a symbol of that love. Father, I just want to offer personal prayer up to this couple. Father, just love, love them so much. Father, thank you for them being in my life personally, my family, and in this church, dear Lord. Thank you for bringing them here to us. Father, I declare the favor of God to continue. It's on their life, Father. Health and happiness, all the good things of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is within them and they're extending it to this region. Pray safety over this couple, Lord. We pull down every stronghold, every weapon that's formed against them or is being formed, Lord, is null and void from this day. We release them into the plan of God today, Lord, for your glory and praise. The enemy will have not have his way in any way in their family or their children. And Father, we declare favor, blessing and strength, Lord, prosperity and good health, Lord, to continue to flow, Lord from the kingdom that's within them in Jesus' name. Having heard you make these vows of continuous love and affection, I do by the authority conferred upon me by God, declare you husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no man separate. You may kiss your bride. <laughs> Allow me to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Roddy and Danielle Schaefer.